I guess it's time. Nena Easy. Our, our speaker for today is Nena Easy. She's the managing partner of Igena LP and a human rights activist who is passionate about child and, and mental well being. She has worked on and still works on a good number of sexual assault cases with a goal towards rehabilitating victims and eliminating future occurrences. Nena, welcome. We are happy to have you today. And we are excited to learn from you. We're all very excited. Welcome, Nena. Welcome, Barista Nena Easy. Please, let's welcome her as she takes the stage. Barista Nena Easy. Welcome. Vice and Nena Easy, you're muted. If you can unmute your. And, uh, okay. Hello. Okay. You're welcome, Ms. Barista Nena Easy. Thank if you. you right at me, please, My... the stage is yours. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure Absolutely. being here. And uh, I would like to thank the conveners of this program. And uh, it's sorry, I didn't get your name, Ma. Okay, it's, it's Miss Sandra Wokolo. Sandra Wokolo. Looks like Miss Barista Nena is having an issue, network problem. So we're just going to hold on a bit. And hopefully she will resolve it. Vice and Nena. Sorry about that. I'm having a little glitch. So why we wait? for Paris and Nena Easy to join us. I'll keep welcoming you all. Please spread the word. Tell your friends, tell your families, your family members, tell everyone who cares about child safety and who would like to know more about child protection rights and the policies. Who would like to know more about the rights children have and how we are supposed to protect them. Please spread the word. We have started, but it's not too late to join. This is the day two of the Adult Debuts webinar series on Fighters Initiative. You're welcome. Please, you're welcome. Ms. Barista Nena Eze will join us shortly after she has resolved her network problem. So. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay, she's back. Rice and Nena Eze is back. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Thank God. It's quite an interesting thing. All right. Hopefully, the network won't have an issue again and yeah. we can because we are past time. Okay. Let's see. Over to you. Okay, so, um, Um, hello everyone, it's my pleasure to, to join this. It's my pleasure to join this webinar and I sincerely apologize for the hitches we've had, but like she said, this is Nigeria. So I'll just quickly run through um, what we have today. Okay. And uh, we're supposed to talk about child protection and policy in Nigeria. I'm so sorry, I'm making you sweat. <laughs> I know, the, the country and everything. <laughs> it's so Fine. interesting. Okay, so um, 
today we are going to be looking at we are going to i think uh, when when i say lecture i think of something very boring and uninteresting but i hope to make it as interesting as possible we are going to be using a whole lot of legal terminologies and okay i'll try to limit my music okay. um i listened to i tuned in on last week's program and i totally enjoyed father tony's um contribution so today as we look at child protection and policy according to the nigerian law um, we're going to a little bit of the things that he had already talked about previously, okay. but from the legal perspective. So today, um, you'd wonder why we're we talking about children, but it's it's really obvious because children are the foundation of the society, and they're the ones who ensure its continuity. So the in other words, the survival and the continuity of the human society depends upon the protection, the preservation, and the nurture and development of the child. So that's why the topic, what we're talking about is very important. So that will bring us to the point where we ask, who is a child? Well, there's no um, universally accepted legal definition of a child and the word child might depend on the context in which it appears. Well, um, I'll just cite a few definitions from some um, legal documents that, that are popular, like the child and young person law. Under that law, a child means a person under the age of 14. However, for the purpose of our discussion today, it will be safe for us to adopt the definition of the word, the word child that is contained in two international instruments. Okay. One of them is the United Nations Convention on the Rights of a Child, 1989, and the OAU Charter on the Rights and Welfare of a Child, 1991, both of which are um, documents that Nigeria is signatory to. Well, under Article 1 of, sorry, under Article 2 of the um, United Nations Conventions on the Rights of the Child. We have um, the child to mean every human being that is below the age of 18. And then under Article 1 of the UN Convention, a child is every human being below the age, age of 18 years, unless under the law applicable to that child. Majority is attained earlier. Okay, having gotten that out of the way, um, we'll look at types of abuses because um, the fight initiative is all about seeking how to protect children um, from different kinds of abuses, especially sexual abuse. So okay. you know, whenever we mention this word abuse, the first thing that comes to mind is fiscal abuse. Well, abuse commonly is um, you can say abuse, I'll just define abuse basically as a pattern of behavior that is used by one person to gain and maintain power and control over another. And uh, these behaviors can actually take on a number of different forms. Now, many people, when they hear the abuse, like I said, we just think it's a fiscal thing. Well, there are different ways um, children can be abused. The first is the fiscal one that we all know beating, slapping, kicking, and the rest of them. Then we know the sexual abuse. And sexual abuse is just a form of physical abuse, or it's on a category of its own because it could include both the physical and the non-physical component. So um, it can involve rape or other of sexual acts. Then we have the third one, which is the verbal or the emotional abuse. We also have the mental, psychological abuse. I'm trying to run down to it. Yes. Um, and we have financial, economic abuse, cultural and identity abuse. And uh, it's just very important to note that of all the six abuses, it's, it's um, okay, all of them, every single one of them is something that shouldn't be overlooked but abuse in all of its forms are a daily reality for many Nigerian children and only a fraction 
ever get to receive help. And abuse of children from in all different types of behaviors and they are sustained over a period of time and often escalating. Now, um, there's this UNICEF report that I saw last week that said it was on their page that six out of every 10 children experience some form of violence. One in four girls and 10% of the boys have been victims of sexual violence. Can you beat that number? It's just very interesting. But of the yeah. children who even report this violence, fewer than five out of 100 receive any form of support whatsoever. So that's something that is really distressing when you come to think of it. So the, the drivers of violence against children are rooted in social norms, including around the use of violence, discipline, violence against women and community beliefs about witchcraft and all of these things tend to increase the child's vulnerability. Now, after all this many English that I've spoken, <laughs> I'll just take us um, closer to what our topic today is actually about. Um, we're going to look at the way children are protected internationally now. So children benefit from um, various provisions, favorable provisions actually on their rights under various international covenants, conventions and other instruments, either jointly with adults or separately. Now, for instance, they enjoy the um, human rights, they enjoy human rights under the Universal Declaration of um, Human Rights by the United Nations General Assembly 1948. Now, under this particular document, the Article 1 contains the declaration that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. And then the Article 2 says that everyone is entitled to all rights and freedom set forth in the declaration. Now, in particular, Article 25 to affirms that um, motherhood and childhood are entitled to special care and assistance and that all children, whether born in or out of wedlock, shall enjoy the same social protection. Now, that's something that doesn't sink in. You know? People, children tend to um, get discriminated against because they have one form of something wrong with them, especially, you know, as we are all Nigerians and we know some of these things. You, you have mm -hmm. people who suffer some kind of pre prejudices where um, people tend to treat them in a certain way because of some certain things happening around them or because of their circumstances. And this, in one way or the other, will now expose them some, to all these numerous forms of abuses that we looked at. Well, um, not to deviate, the International Co Covenant on Civil and Political Rights 1966 protects basic civil and political rights, most of which are now contained in the fundamental rights provision of our Constitution of 1999. That's the one the International Covenant on the Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights also contains such rights such as to work, joint training, adequate standard of living, food, clothing, and so many other things, primary education, right to um, attainable standard of physical and mental health, and a whole lot of things. And Nigeria, interestingly, is a signatory to all these components and international instruments, and all these things are therefore very binding on us. Well, in addition to all of this, we have two international instruments which make special provisions on the rights of the child. Now, if you notice something, all the other ones I talked about, they have general provisions that cover human rights and indirectly affect the child. But now there are just two international instruments that I'm going to talk about, which um, have specific provisions. The first one being the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, and then the second one, the African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the Child. 
the two instruments contain um, substantially the same provisions and we shall be referring to the charter provisions. The provisions include right to life, health, education, special treatment, the administration of justice, protection against child abuse and torture, child labor, harmful social and cultural practices, sexual exploitation, drug abuse, traffic and abduction. So a whole lot. And the highlights, I've already summarized what most of these, um, the provisions of the charter. But you can see that, um, yeah, I'll just mention um, specific ones, like every child has the inherent like, right to life and state child and go to the maximum child survival and development. That's one of the provisions. Well, these laws are there internationally to protect the child from all forms of abuse. And so many countries, including Nigeria, have um, adopted these provisions in one way or the other. And like we call it domesticated them in their countries. Nigeria has is a signatory to the charter, like we said, to talk about before, and um, has tried to adopt that. So I think that will just bring us, let's just look at child protection law in Nigeria, particularly. Starting from um, our constitution, the, the grown norm in Nigeria, which is the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the 1999 constitution. It guarantees certain fundamental rights to every person, including children. And these rights are contained in chapter four of the constitution from section 33 to section 46. And one that should concern us today, particularly include the right to life, right to dignity of the human person, mm -hmm. right to fair hearing, right to privacy and family life. And then we have the right to freedom from the family. So children are entitled to all these rights, particularly under the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We also have a provision in the Constitution for special um, um, enforcement of these rights by courts through the fundamental rights enforcement procedure. Now, apart from the Constitution, um, there are other statutes in the country that deal with the rights of the child. And these include the criminal code, which have a range of offenses meant for the protection of the child and the preservation of his dignity. I'm going to give us a few examples and you'll find some of them really interesting, especially in relation to um, the punishments that set out for the offenders. Now, for instance, um, chapter 21, the criminal code dealing with offense against morality contains specific provisions for the protection of the child and the preservation of the dignity of his person. Now, under section 216, anyone who unlawfully and indecently deals with a boy under the age of 14 years is guilty of a felony and is liable to imprisonment for life with or without speaking. And uh, the imprisonment is for seven years and similar indecent practices between the males attract imprisonment for like three years on that section 217. And then when you get to section 218, thing applies for the same applies to, they have a similar provision for a girl child. So any person who has mortal canal knowledge of a girl under the age of 13 years is guilty of a felony and is liable to imprisonment for life with or without reason. And an attempt to commit this offense is similarly punishable with 14 years imprisonment under the section. So now for the guys, we see seven years and yeah. for the young ladies, we see that the act is like 14 years and then under section 219 a householder who permits his premises to use for such a crime 
is liable for imprisonment for two years. And if the girl is above 13, the year of age, however, um, the person is going to be liable to um, imprisonment for life and with or without weeping. So we have all of this. I wouldn't just keep going on and on because there are a whole lot of provisions like that. In, we have one, I think, 222B that says that whoever having custody, charge or care of a child or young person of four years or under the age of 16 years and allows that child or young person to reside in or brothel is liable to imprisonment for six months with or without fine. We have these laws and these provisions that cover a child being directly sexually abused or being exposed to cases or things that could um, corrupt the child and all of these things. So um, um, I'm just going to move on to the criminal that prescribes a set of duties for guardians and those in local parents to protect the child's right to life protection and preservation. Okay. I hope it's not getting too boring because I've just been talking law, law, and <laughs> all of that. Okay, then I'll, I'll soon get to more interesting parts. Um, we will look at the Child Rights Act of 2003, which has actually made fair attempt under Part 3, 4, 5 to address all forms of violence against children, including physical, sexual, and psychological, as well as emotional violence, injury or abuse, neglect or negligent treatment, which takes place in the family, home, school, home, school, workplace, the streets and the community amongst so many other places. Now, um, picking out some specific, okay, I'll just try to um, summarize some of the provisions of this Child Rights Act and sections 50 to 52 of the CRA provides for the protection of children in need of care against physical or moral danger. And it then empowers the police to step in and bringing a child into child needs care and all of that. So, um, now I'll connect this to who protects the child when we get there. Now, from section 21 to 40 of the Dream Act, we see the provision for the protection of the rights of the child through the prohibition of child marriage, child betrothal, infliction of tattoos, skin marks, exposure to use, production, trafficking of drugs, and other psychotropic substances and the use of children in any criminal activities, abduction and unlawful removal and transfer of a child from lawful custody. So when you look at all of these things, they still cover the sexual abuse and other forms of abuses that we talked about. Now this um, same act provides for a minimum age for sexual activity and the age of legal maturity for all purposes when that has been fixed at 18 years, including the issue of consent to marriage or sexual activity. What this means is that any child, anybody who is below the age of 18 cannot be said to have consented to any kind of sexual activity or marriage. I hope that sank. Now, the law is not in respect of heterosexual or homosexual activities anyway, but on the minimum, minimum age of marriage for women and men, the act prohibits marriage by any person below the age of 18 years. And um, um, particularly part three provides for the protection of the rights of the child through the prohibition of all forms of discriminatory, harmful and exploitative practices such as forced, exploitative or hazardous child labor, child torture, begging for arms, prostitution, unlawful sexual intercourse, and other forms of sex, other forms of sexual abuse and exploitation prejudicial to the welfare of the child in Nigeria. I think this particular act alone like takes care of anything 
if you just want to think about a particular law that takes care of sexual assault and all of that in relation to this part three of the Child Rights Act takes care of it. It also interestingly prohibits the importation of harmful, harmful publications which portray information such as commission of crimes, acts of violence, obscene, immoral, and decent, indecent representations which might tend to corrupt or deprave child. It also seeks to um, protect children by the prohibition of any harmful publication of photographic um, films or any clips which um, aims at corrupting the morals of children in Nigeria. So um, it covers, this particular prohibition covers materials transmitted the media, internet, the video, electronic games, and all. So now we have looked at who the child is. We have looked at the different kinds of abuses that children could be exposed to. And we've looked at um, the international laws that are available to protect a child. And we've also looked at the Nigerian provision of laws in Nigeria are there to protect a child. Um, I'm going to take us now to the next one, which is who protects the child. And when we ask, when we talk about this, we are going to be looking at um, the institutions and the people who have been given the rights by the law to protect children. And um, the first one I will talk about is the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Law Enforcement and Administrative Act 2003, which provides for the prohibition and the prescription of punishment for trafficking in persons, particularly women and children. I'm not talking particularly about the law itself, but about um, something that the law is. The law um, established a national agency for the prohibition of traffic in persons and other related matters. That is NAPTIP. I don't know how many of us know what NAPTIP, NAPTIP is. Have you heard of NAPTIP before? No. So now we know NAPTIP. NAPTIP, um, many people know such issues. But yeah, we do have NAPTIP. I know that. I personally didn't know, interestingly. I thought we were just all about trafficking children and all too. Um, recently, I, okay, when I started working with um, children that have been exposed to different forms of abuses, especially sexual abuse, I got involved with both with me. That was when I realized that Maxi also has the powers invested in it. To actually go and it's so now it's good that I bring it to attention. Nothing is there for us. So when you get to get out matters where children, women, not just little children, or you, you get to hear about um, sex, sexual abuse and other forms of abuse, you can also inform they, um, like I already mentioned, they also investigate and prosecute sexual crimes, especially against children. Now, the National Human Rights Commission of Nigeria, which published a decree in the of and David, they have the money to investigate and monitor human rights violations as well as receive treats and complaints from citizens, including children, about the violation of their rights. So accordingly, the commission since 2000, the year 2000, appointed a special rapporteur on children to assist and redress injuries to child victims of all forms of human rights. Now, under the complaint procedure of the commission, every citizen, that means you, everyone, everyone myself, NGOs, just anybody, any group whatsoever can lodge a complaint seeking redress and legal assistance from the commission. And there's no 
anyway, there's no provision for any sanction. No report. So, no report. What is going to be sanction you or you for whatever reason? But we also have the special na national and state legislative assembly committees on women and children matters, including human rights. And these committees are supposed to be responsible. Things supposed to be because I don't know how well they are doing this, but the committee that meant to address issues of violence against children in Nigeria, both at the National Assembly and in all the 36 states. Do we hear that? 36 states out of Assembly. But how many of us know about these committees? Do we know that? <laughs> I've never heard of it, so I don't know about it. So now, Aside from this, um, we also have the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs. Yeah, this ministry is there to protect the rights of women and children. We actually have a department, a whole department under this ministry, taking care of children welfare. Like, I didn't even, okay, yeah, I, I don't know why they, I think they should have added women and children, so that it would be very obvious. But it's all the affairs of the children are all subsumed under this ministry. Yeah, because um, so some of the cases that I've worked on relating to uh, child abuse and child welfare, I've always had to work in partnership with the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs. I write to them and I get to document some of the things to work with them to on it. So um, right now I know that collaboration with the Ministry of the Information and Education, as well as some um, Ministry of Information and Education, as well as some um, NGOs, they have embarked on sensitization and mass public enlightenment programs about the dangers of violence against children and measures to prevent through advocacy and visits to stakeholders at community level and through the media. I, I I know they can do much more. I really pray that they begin to stand up to do a whole lot more because they have more within their powers to do more. But okay, I will just get to talk about that when we get to that point. But for now, I'll just quickly run through other governmental authorities that are responsible for addressing various forms of violence against children. And one of them is the Special Committee on Human Trafficking, Child Labor, and TV. And we also have the Federal Ministry of Labor and Productivity. We have the Federal Ministry of Just, and we have the Federal Ministry of Information and National Orientation. Um, we also have the Nigerian Immigration Service, the Nigerian Customs Service, and the Nigerian Boundary Commission. And we have the Nigerian Police Commission. A few, I should have even mentioned the Nigerian Police first. But I know most of us have lost hope in the police. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I understand. Um, I understand what we could possibly be thinking, our reluctance to think about the police first. But you can't do without them. You know, when I was reading through most of the Nigerian laws, there was a, an act, I think under the Child Rights Act, I mentioned that um, the Nigerian police have been empowered to take care of children and ensure that children, when they have issues and all the investigate and ensure the prosecution of offenders and even ensure that these children are taken care of. And in it's this before I used to really have a very terrible perception of the police. But within this period, um, with, during my work on several um, abuse cases that I've had to work closely with um, the police, I've been greatly impressed. They actually do put in a whole lot. There are some days that you see the policemen, they are someone, some of them are on their feet from morning to night. Like they barely get to sleep. I think they are under appreciated. So I really do appreciate them, and I know that they are doing a lot to make some of these things work. So maybe we could just try to um, see how we can help to. We could try to see how we can help. 
care these things um, better by ensuring that we involve the right set of people to assist in prosecution of um, such crimes of abuse. Now we have the following international. I'm just going to give you a rundown. I feel like I'm running out of time. So I'm going to give us the following international and bilateral donors provide resources for activities to address violence against children in Nigeria. And the first one is UNICEF. You know UNICEF. Yes. We have okay. We have the ECOWAS, we have the World Bank, we have the EID. Mm -hmm. We have the um, ILO, and we have embassies in Belgium, we have Italy, we have Britain, we have the Netherlands, and we have the United States of America. Now, it's really very important for me to um, note that we have the availability of um, legal aid facility. I don't know what, whether we know what that means. Now, under the Nigerian constitution, the National Assembly is mandated to ensure that the legal aid and financial assistance, financial assistance is available to all indigent citizens and children are inclusive to facilitate submission of complaints and in seeking redress. Now, the problem we have um, in my work on um, child abuse cases is that sometimes, okay, let me give a particular instance. There was this, um, while we were trying to investigate a particular matter I was working on, we, I was with one of the DPOs who was investigating a matter and they called in one woman her child had been raped almost to death. And she didn't have the phone. She, did, she couldn't, she knew the offender. She had evidence, the blood, everything there. But because she didn't have the phone, she didn't even know, okay, I think ignorance number one, she didn't know she was supposed to go talk to the police or talk, to, she didn't know who to run to. So she just carried her child and was treating the child and all with, um, traditional stuff and I think at the end of the day unfortunately a very sad story the child died but I just looked at it and I realized that if this lady was better informed and mm -hmm. if she had the funds then maybe it wouldn't have been a problem but when the police asked her if, why she wanted to make it to the police before to report so the police that the closest police station to her was like two hours a day. I think it was inside, inside, one village, so here in Abuja. And she was like, I don't know. She didn't have the funds to transport herself from a house to the police station. And I felt that to be something really sad. It was, I felt really bad for her. And at the end of the day, the offender ran away and nothing was done. He just mm -hmm. ran like that. It was just very terrible. So now it's going to be very important for people to be aware that they can actually get financial assistance. They can get legal aid from um, the National Assembly. They have office. It's here. Every state has something like that. And we have lawyers who work with the Legal Aid Commission to ensure that um, such things are taken care of. So um, continue with what I was talking about. In addition, we have the Legal Aid Act of 1976, which provides for legal assistance and services to poor citizens charged with the commission of capital offenses in Nigeria. So even if you are the offender yourself, you also have this legal aid to assist you to defend yourself. And it also is available to people who cannot afford to prosecute their matters, you can go to the legal aid, they will help you. We have free services called pro bono in law. And uh, this act also establishes the National Legal Aid Council and it charges it with the responsibility that I earlier mentioned. Now we are going to look at the loopholes. Uh, you know, 
taken us back, we've looked at the laws internationally, we've looked at the laws in Nigeria, and then we've also seen the, um, the people or the institutions that are available for us to run to when we have issues like this. But despite all of the things that I mentioned, it's very unfortunate. There are huge gaps. And the biggest one is that the Convention on the Rights of the Child, which was incorporated through the Child Rights Act, does not apply across the country. You won't believe it that it's only 25 states that have adopted this act. And now the reason for this is that Nigeria is a federation that is comprised of 36 legally equal states and federal capital territory. Now, each of these states has um, an independent legislature and certain laws, including those that pertain to children's rights, even after they've been passed by the federal government, do not become effective until they have been adopted by the lawmakers in each of the states. I don't know whether that's it. Now, the reason for The hold of, like I told. Now it looks like she's having a little glitch. Oh, you cannot hear me. The network. Sorry. Can you hear me? Sorry. You can't hear me. Okay, now it's better now. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. So where where did you stop? Where could you hear me? Not where did you stop? <laughs> yeah, not, you said you said that the states. You're talking about the adoption. The yeah, I was saying the, yes. The 25 states, only 25 states have adopted this act, which is very in by now you think that for something like this all the states will just rush up and will have it up yeah. and functioning properly in all the states but unfortunately um it's just the five states of all the states that have adopted the act so the reason like i was saying is that and um, first i explained that nigeria is a federation that comprises of 36 legal legally equal states and uh, the federal capital territory, and that each of these states have their own independent legislature, and that certain laws, including those that we are talking about, that relate to the children's rights, even after they have been passed by the federal government, do not become effective until they have been adopted by lawmakers in each of the states. Now, the 11 states that we're talking about disagree with the provisions in the acts because they argue that they are in conflict with religious and cultural norms. So all 11 states, unfortunately, are in the northern part of Nigeria. And one of such religions or cultural norms that they are talking about is the fact that um, in the north, we all know, their religion, cultural norms, they are allowed to uh, marry people that are below the legal age of 18 years that have already been stated. So the few it's going to contradict their own Islamic laws or cultural norms, they um, become signatories to adopt this act. And then secondly, they also um, consider the fact that, um, you know, when you adopt somebody, an individual, maybe you pick the child from it and train that child from from um, infancy to adulthood. That person is still regarded as being retaining his original um, lineage, sort of. So you are not fully adopted into that family. So you are allowed to marry such a person that you should have been your family member. So. Um, they do not agree to such laws because the Child Rights Act prohibits such, such an act. And if they sign, it's not just going to contradict these two laws, these two customs that I've mentioned, it's going to contradict a whole lot of other customs. Sorry. 
So now we're just going to look at the way forward. The philosophy behind all of these rights are well-founded and they are directed towards the achievement and the continuity of human race in the atmosphere of peace, harmony, development, and happiness. Now, the various laws and instruments on the rights of a child that we've discussed so far emphasize primarily that in all actions concerning the child undertaken by any person or authority, the best interest of the child shall be the primary consideration. However, despite the copious provisions that we've all mentioned previously in our municipal laws, international instruments in the rights of the child, there appears to be a gap between law and practice resulting in gross inability of the child to realize this right at present. Now the child labor and child abuses are still very rampant with the presence of when you go into the streets, you see children everywhere, children, it's just very appalling and corruption in the government has robbed children of the financial or the finance that was necessary for the implementation of some of this right. So another thing you can think about is the scourge of HIV and AIDS in the country, which is also a threat to the right to life. Some of us have forgotten that HIV and AIDS and the rest are still existing, but these are all things that are just out there. And people sexually assault children, infect them, and leave them there in the streets to die. So we have sexual harassment and abandonment of children still being very relevant, which exposes them to physical and moral abuse. Now, the right to education appears to have been replaced by exploitation of labor in some of the parts of the country, which even further exposes them to all kinds of abuse. Now, Nigeria um, observes various special days during which I believe some of these issues concerning child abuse, neglect, and exploitation should be widely addressed. And some of these days are days like National Children's Day on the 27th of May that we all know, the Day of the African Child, which comes on the 16th of June. And then we have the International Children's Day of Broadcasting, which is on the second Sunday of December. Yeah, and then one last one, the Global March Against Child Labor, a vision in an event. So when we have days like this, I, I think it would be best for us to be able to um, publicize this thing so that people will be aware of the various abuses that are ongoing against children. And then many parents are still abandoning their responsibilities towards their children to fight this. So I think there's a need, I don't think, we all know that there's a need for political will and economic power on the part of the government mm -hmm. to implement these laws in the interest of the Nigerian child. So finally, I know my time is up. <laughs> it is recommended that all stakeholders must be properly educated and enlightened on these things. Parents, children, families, and the government should be alert to our under these laws, and we should pay greater attention to their implementation. Thank you, thank you. So I think I'll wrap up with that. Thank you very much, Marisa Nena. Thank you so much. I hope we have all gotten one or two things from all she have said. Please, if you have questions, can you send your questions in the chat box below? Okay. Um, so the first question, well, surprisingly, I can't really see. Please, if you have your questions, so I can't see any questions right now. Okay, there was one that said, please, what's the acronym N-A-P-I-P, or oh, both correct, the N-A-P-T-I-P, okay. Someone wanted to know the Someone wanted to know the full meaning of NAPCIP. That's NAPTIP. Yeah, NAPTIP, what you talked about. Okay, that's National Agency for the Prohibition of Traffic in Persons and Other Related Matters. Mm -hmm. But do not allow the name to deceive you. Like I said, NAPTIP also takes care of investigation and prosecution of 
sexual crimes, especially against children. Okay. And um, from Brian, he said he should please, he said please more clarification on the legal aid and financial assistance given. Okay. okay. Legal aid. Okay, I'll say when I talked about legal aid, I talked, I said that under the Nigerian constitution first, the National Assembly is mandated to ensure that um, legal aid and financial assistance is available to all indigent citizens. Yeah. So when you go to these people, you have to show proof that you actually cannot afford it. And I said that this also includes children. So children who are born to indigent parents are supposed to be um, um, are supposed to be able to access access um, this privilege or this facility, and they are also to facilitate submission of complaints in seeking redress towards um, child abuse. And in addition, I also mentioned the Legal Aid Act of 1976 that provides for legal assistance and services to poor citizens, and it charged the commission. Um, the commission is charged, established to still offer financial assistance and legal services as well. I don't know if that's clear now. Yeah, I hope I hope it answers this question. Very clear. <laughs> it just answer. Okay, I can't. There's no other question here, so I feel everyone understands. So I wanted to ask, what is your view? What do you think can be done? And the 11 states, 11 northern states that have not domesticated the International Treaty, the Child Rights Act. What I think can be done. Can be done, yes, to encourage them to accept the rights, to make it, to include it in their laws. Okay, I think uh, um, more sensitization, basically, um, because if if they are better sensitized and made to understand that the adoption of these laws is actually to their own um, advantage because it's going to protect their children. They are the ones who suffer a whole lot more of that. Come to think of it, in the whole of Nigeria, the Northern states are the, the states that have more child marriages. So if we prohibit child marriages, then their children get to grow fully get educated and all of that. So in order to do that, I think our educational system will have to, we have to step up, boost that, and ensure that more people in the Northern states are enlightened, they are educated. And with education comes better knowledge. Um, they'll be in a better position to know what's good for them. The sensitization will be more widespread. And um, who knows, the whole cultural um, norm will be um, reversed, hopefully. Hopefully, because like you said, you said um, it also has, <laughs> because you said most of the reason why they don't really act, they've not accepted the law, is because there's a clash between their moral belief and yeah. the law. So mm -hmm. telling them to actually accept it might be like telling them to maybe reject their religion. So it will yeah. actually be difficult to do that. Um, but education will help. That's why I talked about sensitization. Sensitization in terms of going on campaigns and all of that. Then education, when, they, when more people are educated, then they will begin to understand that, oh, this person really is a child. So an ignorant person amongst them might not even know the difference between a child and a grown-up. Mm. So, Okay, so we have another question. Thank you very much. We have another question from Brian. Um, he said it is uh, what you explained previously. His previous question has been cleared, but that he would like to know more on the Ministry of Women Affairs. The Ministry of Women Affairs. Okay, we have um, a ministry in Nigeria called the Ministry of Women Affairs, and uh, they have branches across all the states in the federation. And they are there to address issues that relate to women and children. So when you have issues that 
because the child thing, the children part is not part of the name. So most people tend to overlook that. But they have a department where when you have cases that relate to child welfare or abuses or stuff, you can always send in your complaints to them and have them redressed. Okay, I hope that um, answers this question. Um, there's another question from someone else. Said from said, hi, my name is Ebi. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, Paris and Nena. From your presentation, is it safe to say that we have we have all the laws necessary to protect child rights, but our only problem is implementation, and hence we should speak up and hold our elected officials more accountable. Okay, so I don't know if I, the question. Yeah, so she, she um, paraphrasing what's her question, I think she just mm -hmm. wants to understand whether we need more laws or whether it's an implementation problem that we have. Yes. So yes. I think, yes, you can see the problem is implementation because, because we have a wide range of um, laws, right, left, center, that um, cover all kinds of things down to people who take care of these children to people who commit the offenses and all of that. But I think most of this law should be reviewed. And I also think um, that um, we also need to work harder towards the implementation of the laws. If I tell you how much, I don't want to discourage us, but it's almost impossible to really fluently address sexual issues, like sexual abuse issues. Mm -hmm. From experience they give you headache you know we just looked at the theory but in practice it's not that easy so the implementation is something that we really need to put in a whole lot into i don't know if i answered you ab <laughs> i hope you did i think you did okay so um there are no more questions thank you very much for enlightening us. Thank you so much, Barista Nena. We are happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who have a splendid weekend? You too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, I hope we have all. I hope we have all gotten a thing or two from what Barista Nena has um, has shared with us today. And I want to remind us that um, the previous webinar, if we had missed the previous webinar that was um, that we had, the first webinar that we had, if you had missed this, please go to on our YouTube channel and view it in order for you to follow up and understand what um, we've been talking about. Please also do not forget to follow us on all social media platforms at Fight It Nigeria. And please, please, the feedback form I informed us about at the initial, at the start of this um, webinar is out on the chat box. So I would like you to please fill the feedback form and get back to us. Just let us know your thoughts, what you think we can do to make this webinar um, better, what you think we can do to make this initiative, this the whole idea um, work for us. Okay. And um, would like us to join us in our next um, adult debut webinar series, the third one of it will be on the 19th of December. Yes, and that should be on a Saturday, the same time, 12 noon, 19 December. And the topic shall be the psychological, the psychological impact of sexual abuse on a child. Please let us be here, 12 o'clock. PM and we shall discuss and learn more on the psychological impact. What sexual abuse does to a child um, psychologically, how they feel, how we should be able to um, help them and to become better so that after they have, uh, after they're adults and all, they can be able to help other children as well. So please join us here on December 19th, 2020. Okay, I want us to be reminded of a certificate, that our certificates will be given on those of us that have made 80% attendance on at least three of the webinars. 
guys, for those of you who are interested in getting the certificate from Fight It Nigeria Initiative. Thank you once again, Barista Nenna. Thank you once again. I know it's um, the time is fast spent. It's supposed to be a one hour webinar, but if you ask me, I think um, we actually tried on the time. So thank you again. Thank you very much. Please join us here on December 19th for the next, the third webinar on psychology impact, on the psychologic impact of sexual abuse on a child. Thank you all. I don't know if they are, the system, I don't know if people are still sending questions. Okay, no, no. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Bryce and Nena. Thank you all of you for coming, for attending. Thank you. See you December 19th. Thank you. Bye. Bye.